Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. I totally didn't know what I was doing in that opening. I went absolutely brain dead, so I apologize about that. But we're back, another Thursday. It is a, a week that's gone by fast. Crazy weather here in Metro Detroit. I was hitting golf balls and t-shirt and shorts the, yesterday or uh, Tuesday, and it was snowing yesterday. So who knows what today's going to bring. It's supposed to warm up. So, uh, But before we get into today's episode, just want to let you know this episode brought to you by Titleist and the Pro V1 and Pro V1 and Pro V1 X golf balls. For the best in the world, the goal is to improve every day. Same goes for all of us dedicated to this game, and it starts with choosing the golf ball you can trust. The Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X have set the standard for, for, for performance, and now they just got better. Again. Both models are engineered with a high gradient core technology that delivers lower long game spin for more distance and a more consistent flight. And of course, you can expect that trusted drop and stop greenside control so important to shooting lower scores. Pro V1 is the best combination of distance, spin, and feel in the game and delivers a penetrating flight. Where Pro V1X flies higher, spins more in the short game, while still giving you low spin on longer shots to maximize your distance. Outperform your best. Learn more about the new Pro V1 and Pro V1X at Titleist.com. So we are uh, back, and yes, uh, you heard me right in the beginning there. uh, In the Midwest, uh, here in Detroit, we had uh, some crazy weather. So on Tuesday, uh, I was sitting there, and uh, it was beautiful out. Absolutely beautiful. It was like 70 degrees. Had my net set up, my mat, all that, and uh, hit some balls, and uh, it was great. I was in shorts and, and a t-shirt, uh, and then today uh, I went into work, and it was like 30 degrees, and it was snowing when I left, and I think it's like high 20s or something like that tonight, so I'm recording this on Wednesday night, but uh, just just kind of crazy weather, and then it's supposed to warm up again. Uh, I'm playing Sunday, so I'm excited. It's, uh, you know, the golf uh, is getting back a little bit, and uh, we've... We've got some warm weather on the horizon, and uh, it's been great to get out there and hit some balls and uh, not have to hit with, like, 10 layers on or go indoors or whatever. So uh, excited for that, excited to go play uh, on Sunday. Uh, right now I know I'm waiting for my brother to get back to me to say if he can play or not. Right now we've got uh, a couple guys uh, already. We've got a threesome, so waiting for one. And then uh, if my brother can't play, hey, we got to we got to replace him. So we got a few phone calls to make if that's the case, but going to go play the old famous uh, Rackham Golf Course in Metro Detroit, right in uh, Huntington Woods. Even though it's a like Detroit course, it's not technically in Detroit. It's like a couple miles north, uh, but it's in Huntington Woods. I grew up on that course. I've played it a million times. Uh, my dad took me there, and I've seen the changes over the year. It's actually a Donald Ross course, which is pretty cool. Uh, there, the first couple holes uh, on the front nine, like I think it's like one, two, three, uh, or something like that, actually got slightly you know changed uh, when they put in the freeway that runs next to it. Uh, but the, the whole back nine, everything else, uh, from what I've been told is still the same Donald Ross design, uh, that he, that he did. Uh, now they've removed some trees and changed a few things up like that, uh, just to kind of, uh, you know, get rid of some of the, the trees that were dying and some other stuff, but, uh, it is still a, a very cool course. It's got some interesting greens. It's got a few holes that are just way easy and some that are kind of tougher than they should be. So, <laughs> Uh, But it'll be fun to go out and play, and I'm excited. Already, you know, it's Thursday. I'm already thinking about what's going to go in the bag, how many clubs I'm bringing, uh, what bag is going to fit all the clubs I'm going to bring, and and everything. So it should be a whole lot of fun. i got a bunch of stuff i got to decide on uh, when it comes to putters and things like that. What do I want to bring? Drivers, driver shafts. Uh, And you know there's going to be more than 14 clubs uh, for sure. There's going to be, I mean, there's got to be a minimum of two drivers. There may be, you know, maybe two putters. Maybe I'll go front nine with one, back nine with another. Um, I mean, there's going to be minimum basically 18 clubs, maybe an extra driver shaft or two. So there's going to be a whole lot, a uh, lot going on. <laughs> it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. So I'm excited to do that. And, uh, it'll, yeah, it'll be kind of my second round of the year, uh, in Michigan, which is kind of crazy, uh, especially in, you know, being February or I guess technically that'll be March, uh, 3rd, but, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be a good time. So I'm excited for that. And, uh, yeah, so today, uh, or the past couple of weeks, I've been hitting a lot of stuff. Uh, thankfully I've been getting out and hitting stuff. I've, uh, <clears throat> got my launch monitor kind of up and running. I got some stickers for the clubs. Uh, I've got a Bushnell launch pro that, uh, is basically unlocked. So it's like a GC three. Um, and then I've got, uh, when I got it, I didn't have any stickers with it. Uh, the guy who was using it before kind of used them up and <clears throat> all that. So I had to order some stickers and I actually just went on and ordered some, uh, kind of generic stickers just one online i don't even remember the website the things over there uh but i got like 760 stickers for like 16 bucks uh and they were fine uh got them all got all the heads uh all the driver heads and everything stickered up um i didn't stick up any of the wedges or uh irons really just because 
you know, I figured maybe, maybe I'll do seven irons when I go to test seven irons. But, uh, right now I didn't do any of that. Didn't do any of the wedges, uh, just cause you know, I don't really care about club head speed on a 56 degree, but, uh, I've been hitting those and uh, it's been, yeah, working pretty well. Uh, the thing works pretty solid, uh, for, uh, for, you know, hitting into a net and, and all that. So I've had that thing set up and I've been hitting a lot of, uh, hitting a handful of, uh, of, of drivers. And today is another driver episode, just like last week was but this week. We're going Callaway paradigm ai smoke so the callaway paradigm ai smoke series and uh yeah i've got the max and the triple diamond head uh so both those uh the ones i was hitting uh, i didn't do the max d uh just because one i left it at the office and two i know most people these are the kind of the two bread and butter ones that they uh they want to see but I uh, was hitting these two, and, and it's interesting because I've heard, you know, a lot of really good things about these two drivers from uh, people who have been hitting them for a while now. And I've hit them for a little bit, kind of off and on in my matrix of hitting stuff. And uh, I've been hitting uh, the, the Max and the Triple Diamond uh, a good amount. And, you know, I was finally like, all right, let's go hit them, get a bunch of numbers, and just hit uh, a ton of balls. So that's what I went out. And by the time I was done... Uh, I was I was pretty dead. I was pretty tired. I was uh, I, I hit a lot of shots. I don't remember how many there were. Um, I think I can go on here and look. I think it tells you how many. But uh, or in, in terms of recorded, and then I didn't even like have it on when I was just warming up with wedges and some seven irons and stuff. So uh, I think I hit uh, just with these two drivers. I think I hit almost fifty drivers. Uh, so like it was probably twenty five each, right about. Um, but uh, but yeah, hit them. And uh, yeah, the new AI smoke, uh, the Max there, and then. Uh, the triple diamond as uh you know experts only as they kind of say of the triple diamond there but uh kind of the two models that i know most people will be looking at uh when they go out and, and try them and uh yeah i mean in terms of looks uh i know you know looks are kind of each person's own uh kind of thought you know in terms of, of the style the design the shaping uh color choices all that stuff is i the beholder uh, i i think these look really good uh, i actually like them a little bit more uh, than last year's paradigm i thought callaways made these look a little bit more square uh, these are both 10.5 heads and i know with some callaway drivers you get into the higher lofts like the 10.5s the 12s uh, and that face looks a little bit more shut and these ones here sit really, really square. I mean, the triple diamond for being a 10.5, you do see a little bit of loft on it, but it almost looks a little bit open the way they uh, kind of shape that top line. And I know right when these things hit the market, everybody kind of, you know, certain people are saying, oh, the, the, the raw carbon crown is, or the glossy carbon crown is just too much. It's, you know, it's, it's too distracting. It's got too much going on. Uh, I, I don't mind it at all. I actually kind of like it. I like, you know, when companies kind of show off the tech that's in their drivers. So uh, both of them have the, 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 gloss uh, carbon crown uh, interesting to note that the paradigm max as you look and see has the little chevron alignment logo on it uh, on the dead center on that top line that's painted gray and uh, when you look at the triple diamond it does not have that it's a pure clean uh, top line uh, on that driver so interesting that you know they've set these up for for, for different kind of players uh, on the bottom triple diamonds got the you know two movable weights one in the front one in the back uh, and you can kind of swap those out if you move the heavier one forward uh, you should see probably a little reduction in spin maybe slightly lower launch uh, and then also you know the center of gravity shifts a little bit for those things uh, so it will feel a little different uh, through the swing and then the max version has the big sliding weight all the way in the back which not only lets you kind of influence uh, the ball flight uh, but it also uh, adds some forgiveness to this head pushing some of that uh, weight far back uh, in the head but you can slide it to fade slide it to draw out of all the balls i hit i left it uh, just straight neutral and uh, just hit it that way so uh, a really good looking drive the bottom's got the uh, the forged carbon uh, like the kind of they had with the paradigm a little bit but they added this kind of like white ink to it so it has kind of this milky kind of blue look and uh, it's it's pretty interesting i like that there's no two that'll be the same uh, the triple diamond one for here has like it's a little bit lighter blue it's got a little more like swirl to it uh, where the you know the AI sm or the Max head is uh, just a little more subtle, a little darker, and it's just kind of a cool look. I think it's uh, it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, but shaping wise, you can definitely tell the Triple Diamond's got a little bit uh, shorter kind of face to back uh, on it, uh, so it's not kind of stretched out as much. Uh, it definitely also has a, a little look of being a little shorter heel to toe as well. Um, so a little more compact look, a uh, little more kind of rounded off look and, uh, the triple, I mean, they both look good. I think, uh, even though the, the triple diamond, uh, you know, 
the triple drive is smaller, even though with the bigger Max head, I still think it looks pretty good. Uh, it, you know, it's stretched out a little more, but it's not uh, it's not crazy out of proportion or anything like that. And it still has that Callaway look to it. So if you've been a, a Callaway you know driver fan for a long time, uh, the look of it should be pretty comfortable and, and shouldn't be anything too uh, too far out there. Um, the other big thing is going to be interesting: AI Smart Face with micro. Uh, what is it? Micro deflections, so you're getting more distance and straighter shots uh, on miss hits, and uh, you know hitting this thing here. When I first hit it, it was interesting. Both these heads, uh, when I hit them, I hit them indoors first. That's why I, I first went. And the thing I kind of didn't like the sound and the sound of it uh, when you hit it, I thought it was a little louder, a little higher pitch, a little more metallic uh, than the Paradigm and, and some of the drivers before it. Uh, and then hitting it outside, uh, you know, on my net and everything with, you know, wide open backyard, uh, definitely not as loud as I thought. Uh, so that inside, uh, when you're indoors, it definitely ampl amplifies uh, some of the sound. Uh, when you get outside, you don't know, or at least I didn't notice that near as much. Uh, I do feel like the face is just a little bit softer feeling uh, on both heads. You know, when you get it close to center, you can really find kind of, it almost feels like that face is kind of like, you know, flexing and, and adding some ball speed. It just has this really soft feel to it. Uh, and with both these, I was hitting Strixon Z-Star golf balls, so identical balls. Um, but you really could kind of feel the ball compress off the face and go, uh, as well as, you know, when you moved out in a little bit, uh, away from center and kind of had high toe or low heel area, uh, you didn't quite get that same responsiveness. I mean, you got that, you got responsiveness knowing that you missed it, but you didn't get that same soft, like compressed feeling, uh, as the ball left the face. So uh, a little softer feeling there, but outside the sound and, and all that definitely did not make that big of a difference as, you know, compared to what I thought it was going to do, uh, from indoor testing. But, uh, both, like I said, like look really good. I like both. I mean, my game, uh, you know, goes towards the max, uh, you know, but after hitting them, I mean, I hit pretty, hit them both pretty, uh, pretty equal, which was, uh, not shocking, uh, in a sense, but, but they were a little closer than I thought they would be for me. Uh, but also this is, uh, you know, getting out there. This is the first time I was in a, a t-shirt and shorts and I uh, actually got a little bit of speed back. I was, uh, I saw 103, uh, on the monitors, a couple, a couple 1025s and stuff like that. I used to be, a like 104 to 106 guy, uh, back in the day. And then as, uh, as I've gotten older here, I'll be 43 very shortly. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit, but I think, uh, maybe myself working out a little bit, riding the old Peloton and all that, maybe that has helped. Uh, but, uh, got out there and, so a little bit more speed again i'm still not you know a big hitter or fast guy or anything like that but uh you know got out there saw just a little bit more speed which was nice it was nice to kind of see some uh uh, some 150 uh, ball speed numbers and things like that that I hadn't seen uh, basically all winter. Um, but, uh, but no, both drivers really, really good. Uh, we'll start with the AI Smoke Max. And uh, the Max is, yeah, the more forgiving model. It's kind of the bread and butter. Uh, I've kind of been using that term this year for, uh, uh, for drivers. And this is the bread and butter one. This is the one you're going to see guys on tour play. Uh, you're going to see, you know, LPGA tour plays, Corn Ferry, whatever you're going to see. Uh, the professional tours, uh, this thing's on there. You're going to see, you know, very skilled amateur players. Uh, you're going to see, you know, guys like us WRXers who are tinkers play a ton, uh, better players. And I think you're going to see uh, all the way this up to beginner players as well. I think, uh, you know, this head here has a lot of forgiveness in it. They don't tout uh, an MOI number. Uh, they're not, you know, saying... 10k anything like that so we don't have an moi moi number on it but i do have to say that it's extremely stable uh, on miss hits i mean you hit it on the toe hit it on the heel i mean i kind of got it all over the face the only place i didn't necessarily hit it up near the dot didn't hit it there uh which was pretty good <laughs> kept that thing intact um but you know i i, I hit it all over the face a little bit and uh it, it definitely offered a very consistent uh kind of draw shot shape for me and uh a very you know pretty close to to straight on uh neutral starting line so uh, again, very stable, uh, looked pretty forgiving, forgiving all the shots that I was hitting there, uh, on the monitors, you look down range, uh, everything, you know, played really well. There was, I mean, a couple, you know, big shots left that, that were, you know, my swing, but on, on good, uh, on great swings, it, it performed really well, uh, on good swings, it performed really well. And then as you got to, you know, a little bit more poor swing, you still got away, uh, with a pretty playable shot and a pretty consistent shot shape, which was, uh, which was really nice. Uh, the head throughout the swing, same thing. I mean, when you miss it out on the toe or the heel, the club never felt like it wanted to twist, you know, like it wanted to just flop shut, uh, you know, when you hit a low heel or in order to just want to fly open, uh, when you hit it up on the toe, uh, it, it stayed pretty much, uh, much dead straight. And, uh, yeah, like I said, that didn't, uh, that didn't change very much in terms of, uh, starting line or anything like that. Um, 
I do have to say that uh, between the two, there was you know slightly different in terms of, of how the ball started, but everything uh, that I hit, uh, I pretty much hit uh, you know little draws or uh, things like that. Now this was the straightest out of the two. Uh, I do have to say uh, I didn't see you know too much right. Uh, on on my shots there, uh, if you look down like kind of that bird's eye view, look down the straight line, very little to the right, everything was kind of straight, and then to the left, uh, the good shots kind of started and just kind of hung out right of the line and came back and fell just left of the line. And those were kind of the best shots I had, uh, and if I could you know get those on the course, I would take them all day. Um, but overall, just I mean a really good head, a really solid. Um, you know, performing head, and I really liked it. Uh, I like I said, the sound and feel I like better outdoors. And uh, when you start looking at stuff like uh, you know the actual launch monitor numbers, uh, there's some really consistency there. I mean, uh, when you start looking at, you know, uh, we'll go through and, and basically ball speed uh, on the max head. Was, I average 145.2, uh, which uh, you know, again, as I tell you guys, I don't delete stuff unless it's absolutely horrible um i keep pretty much everything in there uh but uh, i mean the, the variation was you know uh, the standard deviation was 2.1 uh, i think the worst shot in there was uh was 140 and then uh of course it's not going to scroll with my finger now that i want to actually look at it um but i know i you know i definitely saw some stuff up there in the uh you know 150 arena and, and higher 145s on uh, stuff like that which was pretty nice and that was again stuff hit all over the place um there was a few shots too that uh, I remembered I wanted to like you know star the shot because I hit it so poorly and I wanted to see like you know like what the ball speed was on that shot that I just absolutely hit horribly uh, and I want to say that uh, one of the last ones I hit it so far off the toe it was just uh, it was just kind of dumb um, and I went I went back and looked and it was like a like a 142 or 140 one one uh ball speed on it and i hit it so far off the toe uh that i was shocked that it was uh, kind of anywhere in play uh and the shot ended up being pretty good i mean it was a little uh a little low had a little you know sweeping kind of draw to it uh but it still ended up being a playable shot i think if you would have went out and actually been playing on the course uh, you would have been in the rough but uh, it would have been pretty playable um and then these things here too i guess i forgot to say uh, both heads i was hitting uh the project x denali black uh 60 gram 6.5 um, which I know a lot of you are going to be like, dude, you swing at 100 miles an hour. What are you doing with an X flex? It's true. I just I, I, I kind of fight the left a little bit, so a little stiffer shaft kind of helps straighten it out. I do hit a little sti you know a stiffer shaft farther if I can uh, kind of control it. But, um, but yeah. So anyway, ball speed uh, on the max head uh, is going to be 145.2 uh, was my or yeah 145.2 uh, was my average, uh, and then the launch was 11 degrees, uh, and then. Uh, spin 268.84 uh, with a carry distance of 235.9 and then I averaged 100.7 miles an hour with the max head which was pretty cool and then the launch direction was 1.8 right so it started out just 1.8 uh, I believe it was degrees just right of target uh, and then you know pretty much everything kind of came back I hit a few straight balls that just hung out uh, just right of the target but it did basically start pretty much dead straight uh, online just you know maybe two degrees right which is pretty much uh, nothing uh but yeah i mean club head speed was definitely up uh spin at 2684 i know that's gonna sound high but uh, i've got a pretty neutral uh attack angle i think i hit up uh on it about 1.3 yeah 1.3 for my angle of attack uh so i mean i come in at pretty neutral so i'm not crazy high spin but i'm also not crazy low spin as well but uh you know spin wise uh, that variation as well was was kind of not that uh that great i mean you, d you basically saw you know 2400 2300 25 26 uh and then there was like you know one shot i left up to the uh right that uh, you know was 2974 and i had one at 3125 uh that i kind of hit uh you know out to the right there kind of left the face open a little bit um you know things like that but uh, for the most part, spin was all around kind of that 24 to 2500 number, which is kind of where I live. So that's that's pretty average. And I think uh, if you take away a couple of those uh, little shots to the right, that number comes down even a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, 235.9 carry uh, and a smash factor of 1.44 on average. So uh, the smash factor there definitely saw, um, you know, uh, higher numbers than 144 uh had a couple that were a little bit lower as well so there's uh, uh, a little bit of both in there but you know that's that's my my game i mean i'm just not uh that that consistent in a sense i, I do hit miss hit the ball a little bit 
Um, but overall, you know, just a, a really solid driver. Really impressed with the forgiveness of it uh, that you can get away with uh, with some of the shots you can and still have a pretty playable ball. Um, I'm going to be really excited to get it out on the course uh, some more because I want to see how it handles, uh, you know, under pressure. And then uh, also, I wouldn't mind launching it just a little bit higher. You know, I wouldn't mind getting. Uh, I, I I did the the Denali Black because I had two of them uh, and I didn't have to swap the shafts because uh, you know this one here has all fit in it. Um, so the Max, I have the all-fit adapter, so I have a Denali Black with all-fit, uh, and then I have the stock Denali Black uh, that came uh, with one of these heads as well. So that's why I picked that one to try. I think, you know, going something maybe a little bit higher launch, like a Denali Blue, uh, I could see even a few more yards out of this thing uh, if I can able to launch it just maybe a little bit higher uh, without adding, you know, any spin. But the Max was really, uh, really impressive. I mean, I, I really liked the head. I think it played really well. I think it was definitely more uh, forgiving than I kind of expected, and I don't know why I didn't have, like, crazy I, I think because they're you know the max d and the max d fast i figured those would be kind of the, you know the more forgiving heads and uh, this thing here lets you get away with a lot of shots i can see why this thing is going to be played by you know a lot of players a lot of you know a wide range of handicaps uh it's just uh it's super adjustable uh, it doesn't launch crazy high. It doesn't spin crazy high. But for a player like myself, it's got enough spin uh, to keep the ball in the air uh, and enough launch where, you know, I'm not going to have to go up to a 12-degree head or play a, you know, way higher launching shaft or anything like that. So uh, I think I can see where this is going to basically play uh, for a lot of players and be able to be dialed in towards, uh, you know, whatever kind of game uh, you have going into it. Um, and then uh, with the Triple Diamond, uh, yeah, the, the little smaller guy, I was a little... Uh, you know, a little worried about this one just because I was like, you know what, if I'm miss hitting it or not hitting it well, this could be uh, a rough go. But uh, on this one here, much like the other, uh, the, the AI Smoke Max, I didn't, you know, move the weight around. Uh, heavy weight in the back, light weight in the front. So this one here is a 2 gram in the front, 14 gram in the back. Uh, same shaft, like I said, Denali Black, uh, 65 or 60. 65 uh and uh yeah with the weight in the back i've heard some good things about forgiveness on the head and it actually didn't disappoint it was pretty uh uh it was definitely more forgiving than i thought let's put it that way i mean i think it is a little shorter you know heel to toe so there's a little less real estate up out on the toe or down on the heel uh, but they are uh it is pretty forgiving now i did notice you know compared to am max a little more curvature on my draw uh you know with this one or there could be when i missed it uh, when you hit it dead straight, it had a little less of that uh, that draw to it. it. Was more of a straight ball. It started out just a hair more right uh, of that target line, uh, and it drew back a little. But it was bet definitely a little bit, uh, uh, you know, there's definitely a little bit more movement uh, compared to the max on this head. Uh, but if you're still, a, a, you know, if you're like me where you're, you know, a bad nine trending to a ten, whatever, this is still going to be a playable head, especially if you're somebody who needs that low spin, uh, but still needs a little bit of forgiveness. Uh, and you know needs a little bit of playability. Th this is definitely going to uh, you know still offer that and uh, and give you some uh, some solid shots when you're not playing or not swinging, you know perfectly uh, out there. And uh, distance wise, like this one here, definitely a cannon. Uh, I saw the fastest ball speed uh, out there on this one, which was like 151 something I think. Uh, and then also uh, definitely hit the longest drive out of everything with uh, with this head as well. Uh, it was just uh, one of those where I think, you know, being a little smaller head, being a little more compact, having that CG forward, uh, and I think I talked about it with, like, the, the TaylorMade drivers, it just swings a hair different, you know, I mean, as, as you kind of rotate down uh, from the top of the swing in, uh, I feel like this head just squares up. Uh, you know, maybe just maybe a hair faster, uh, being that CG is just kind of pushed back a little bit closer to the, the shaft, uh, but it squares up really easily. Uh, and uh, but even though doing that, it doesn't necessarily want to go left, like it's still going to draw. I mean, that's my shot. Uh, so when I hit it, I'm still going to see all those draws, uh, but it definitely wasn't uh, big hooks or anything like that, or you know, uncontrolled draws that just keep you know, keep going left and and won't stop. Uh, but they definitely uh, you know, saw that. Spin was definitely low. Uh, you could definitely tell there was a, a few hundred RPM left. Uh, it was interesting because I, as I was scrolling through, uh, the actual peak height uh, or, or something like that were, were pretty similar. Um, I think they were both like, you know, I'm gonna, now i got to pull it up because I know if I'm going to uh, say it, I don't want to like, uh, you know, have a totally uh, wrong number. But uh, if you looked at like, uh, where was it? Ball flight data, peak height peak height really the difference there was it was basically 74 and 73 so 73 8 with the paradigm max 73 3 uh with the the smoke so i mean you're talking less than a foot uh in terms of of total uh, distance but then the descent angle uh this thing just came out a little bit flatter with that less spin and the descent angle on this on the 
triple diamond was 33 and a half uh compared to 34 7 with the max so uh definitely coming out you know coming out a little bit flatter uh that ball was kind of hanging there and, and just being a bit more boring trajectory uh than the ai smoke max so uh you know while you know the numbers aren't for me aren't going to be wildly different uh they definitely had a little bit of of you know you know in terms of looks and things like that they definitely are a little bit different and i think you know there there is a wide enough variation where uh the player that fits in the triple diamond uh will probably see you know better performance so, you know, it won't be basically the exact same uh, for most players. You're going to see some type of difference uh, in terms of the performance uh, metrics on this. But uh, again, really impressed with how playable this thing is for being kind of the low split spin neutral players version. Uh, it, it definitely had, uh, you know, more to it than that. And you weren't, you didn't have to be perfect uh, to play this thing. Uh, so for me, when you went out, got out there, ball speed, uh, just slightly faster, 145.4. So just 0.2 miles an hour faster uh, than the uh, than the max. Uh, and then launch was 10.8. So again, I mean, almost identical. Uh, there were, you know, with this one here, uh, a few more shots that, you know, as I kind of left it out to the uh, the right a little bit more with this and the starting line was a little bit more right. I feel like that kind of probably added some launch where if I was able to kind of isolate shots and just pick uh, the really good ones, you'd probably see a bigger spread uh, on that uh, that launch number. But 10.8 was my launch there. And again, this is a 10, 10 and a half head. Both of them were. Uh, and then you get to uh, spin about 250 RPM less. 2433 uh, was my average spin for this thing. And uh, it, it definitely... You know, it, like I said, the, the the balls there had a little flatter flight to them from you know visually uh, on the kind of driving the virtual driving range. Uh, it, it just looked a little bit flatter, uh, and then uh, you know uh, carry distance was two forty one three, so a, a little bit long. I mean, we're talking almost uh, five and a half yards a little longer uh, the triple diamond than the, than the max uh, with a club speed of ninety nine point eight. So, little, you know, a hair slower, 100.7 to 99.8, and then uh, 1.46 smash. So I was hitting the center a little bit more here. I don't know, maybe the smaller head made me kind of, you know, focus or something a little bit better, but I was hitting a little closer to center uh, on the, the triple diamond a little more often. Uh, and then the start line, again, the launch direction, uh, three and a half degrees right. So three and a half degrees right as opposed to 1.8. So you can kind of tell this thing uh, definitely has, I don't want to call it fade in it, uh, but it definitely keeps that starting line away from being, you know, too far left or anything like that. Uh, but but it's very similar numbers. I mean, very similar numbers between the two. Uh, and again, very su you know, surprised at how playable the Triple Diamond is. It gave me a little bit of confidence that if the Triple Diamond is, you know, better in terms of that sense, like, you know, I'm hitting it a little further, uh, you know, six yards is, is six yards. It's half a club. Uh, you know, I don't, I feel like even on a bad day, I can get away with the Triple Diamond and still play it. Uh, again, I think both these heads for me, you know, going to like a Denali Blue or something just a little bit higher launching uh, could even net me a few more yards because I think there's, uh, then, you know, these things will keep the spin low uh, and still, uh, you know, even on the miss hits, the you know the low heel shots and stuff like that, uh, that I want to still sacrifice uh, anything there. Um, but I do have to say that uh, yeah, I mean, right now between the two, they're definitely both going to go on the course. I want to go basically hit them both on the course, see what they do there, and then also uh, you know kind of try a couple different shafts because like I said, I, I did those two because I knew uh, I could go side by side without having to. Because the thing with all fit is, if you have all fit, you have to switch the screw out. Uh, on everything but tailor made so on callaway titleist whoever you got to switch the screw out um and i only have one callaway screw uh because i have one sleeve and i only have one sleeve uh on there as well so uh it was easier just to take uh you know the stock denali black uh six five and, or 60 gram six five and put it against uh one that i already had as well with an all fit tip so uh that's why you know kind of did that um and uh yeah but i think uh, you know the triple diamond being as good you know as well as i've hit it uh i think it, it definitely made you know swap that tip out or go soft that screw out and put it in uh and then uh you know give this a try with a few other shafts as well because uh right now it, uh, it it's performed really well and uh it'll be fun to get on the course you know when there's only one ball you know there's a little bit of pressure there uh there's no uh you know, there's no net. You can just grab the ball if you hit it and swing and hit it again and, you know, hit a bad one, just, you know, tee it back up. Uh, it definitely, uh, you know, will be interesting there. So, um, but no, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, one of these two is, is really good and definitely one of these could uh, could make the bag as well. And it's fun narrowing it down to uh, to what uh, to see here. So, yeah, if you're looking for, you know, kind of a low spin, uh, you know, slightly lower launching, a little lower spinning head, uh, the triple diamonds there. And honestly, if you're, a, you know, a handicap, kind of that mid-range, 
change. I, I think it's, you know, don't be too scared of it. Uh, it, it definitely is uh, forgiving there. But uh, if you're somebody, uh, you know, who needs maybe just a little bit more launch, a little bit more spin to kind of optimize that distance, uh, you know, the Smoke Max will give you all that and a, uh, a pretty straight ball flight and let you get away with some pretty, uh, some pretty poor swings. So uh, I definitely had a, a couple Hideki moments of one arm follow throughs that when you looked on the actual launch monitor ended up not being uh, too horrible a shot. So uh, anytime you get away with that, uh, you know, you got to be happy. So uh, yeah, the new era, you know, AI smokes, I think, uh, you know, really solid. I'm, I'm really impressed with, uh, with both. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to take them both out of the course, and then it's just a matter of kind of matching up uh, shaft-wise what's going to work uh, best. Because I think that uh, the Nile Black is probably just a little bit low, probably just a little bit stiff for uh, for my needs. I might go a little bit softer, but I do have an Anali Blue uh, to try in there as well. So that uh, will probably be next on the list to uh, to put in these heads. Um, but yeah, those are the Air Smoke Max. You can go to CallawayGolf.com. You can check out all the info on both of them, uh, and then also the Max D and uh, Max D Fast, uh, the, you know all four heads that they've got going this year, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it's it's fun uh, hitting this stuff, and I'm pretty sure one of these will be out with me uh, on the course uh, on Sunday. I don't know which one; it'll probably be the Triple Diamond. Uh, let's be honest; I'll probably swap the screws out uh, and put the Triple Diamond in there with uh, with, with some he- with with a, a slightly higher launching shaft and uh, and see how it goes. So. One of them will be with me, and I'll report back on uh, on how that goes uh, out on the course. But uh, like I said, depending on the player you're looking for, I think, uh, and I think there's some overlap, you know, there but too. So I think with these, you're going to have to go try them both uh, and see which one kind of works uh, works best for your game. So. That is that there. Um, again, remember this episode brought to you by Titleist and the Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Pro V1X is my ball. So flies higher. A little bit more spin with the short game. Still got low spin for more distance. A little firmer feel. Pro V1 is kind of the, you know, the gold standard. A little more penetrating flight. Low spin on the long iron. Still drop and stop green control uh, with, in the, with the wedges in your hand. And a little softer feel. So check out Titleist.com and check out the Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Uh, and that's all I've got. So if you're not following me on Instagram, please do at Club Junkie Pod. I'm hopefully going to do Q and A today, uh, or maybe do a live. We'll see. Uh, and then also wherever you're listening to the podcast, whatever. Uh, one, thank you, and two, if you could like, subscribe, whatever you know you do, that would be awesome. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe, all that. Uh, if you want to watch this on YouTube and see my ugly face, uh, hold up clubs in front of the screen. Uh, that's great as well. Just search Golf the Reactor Radio, and uh, and there I am. So. Anyway, hopefully you guys have a great weekend. Hopefully you get out and play some golf. Hopefully it's nice to where you are at. And uh, let's swap some uh, golf stories next week. So have a good weekend. We'll talk to you next week.